three reasons why you should not consider Experian Boost. I'm gonna say it again. Three reasons why you should not consider Experian Boost. Now, be sure you stay to the end on this third one. Um, before we do, let me first explain what it is that we do and, and what qualifies me to give you this information. First of all, we're a FICO specialist. We specialize in the FICO classic algorithm, the two, four, and five, that 100% of your mortgage lenders use and 90% of the lenders use. No, 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 not 90% of the lenders use FICO, 90% of the lenders use two, four, and five. Matter of fact, the FICO eight, as we talked about in previous videos, the Advantage Score 4.0, that apps like Credit Karma uses, these are your newer monitoring scores. What could help those scores could in fact hurt your FICO Classic score. Well, to me, I wanna talk about, I wanna do the things, I wanna, if I'm gonna try to recover from some bad things from the past, I wanna make the moves that's gonna apply to the algorithm that the lender uses, the one that determines a yes or no, right? It makes perfect sense. We've been doing it for a lot of years. This is good stuff. So be sure to like and follow my content. Let me educate you on this. So here we go. So Experian Boost, once again, this, this sounds great, but let me give you a little history before we go into those three reasons why you shouldn't use them. First of all, Experian Boost was initially a pilot program for what is soon to come called the Ultra FICO, okay? Now, this is a new FICO model that's gonna be exactly that, an enhancement to your current FICO. All of this probably would have happened already had it not been for COVID. And they, they, put, they said they were gonna put the pilot program out. They did about three years ago. That's in the form of Experian Boost. The same three companies that, that were pushing the Ultra FICO, which is Experian, FICO, and another company called Finicity. They've gotten together to come out, come up with this score enhancement. Now, I've got a lot more detail in a study that I've done, and I've put the link in the, in the bio, so be sure to look at that, and we'll go into more detail on that, just in case you're questioning anything that I'm telling you. But it made sense, these three companies, to come up with this plan. Now here in a second, we're gonna ask the why behind that. Why would they wanna do this? Why are they interested in increasing and in putting this carrot on the stick to try to influence folks to enhance their credit score? Right? There's a big why behind this. Now, we're gonna process through that, but very quickly, Experian is a company that obviously reports credit, right? Or Change the credit, reports it. FICO scores the credit. Finicity, the third company, is a company that has been linked with thousands and thousands of different bank accounts out there, allowing you to be able to see all your banking information from one source, right? Okay. Reason number one, you should not do Experian Boost. It doesn't help your real scores. It doesn't. It doesn't do anything to your lender scores. It doesn't do anything to your Equifax and TransUnion, even under the current score models. The only score model that it impacts is and is specific to Experian only is FICO A. So really, even though it says, oh, look at there, it jumped me 12 points. It's just smoke and mirror. Your real scores are not reflecting that. Point number two, many lenders use debt, current debt, open debt, that is on your credit against your debt to income ratio. Up until Experian Boost, they didn't use your electric bill or your water bill or your cell phone bill against your current debt to income, which what? It affects your buying power. Well, now it's posted and many lenders absolutely are using that information against your current DTI. So that's not a good idea. But the third biggest reason you should not do this is if you recall, if you've done Experian Boost, you were about to, or if you're going to, hopefully you'll put on the brakes when you see the part when they ask you for the, your username and your password to your current checking account. The same username and password but you personally use 
to go into, to transfer money, to bill pay, all of the above. Don't think it's a wise idea to provide that information to companies that have been hacked six times in the last five years. I also don't think it's a wise idea to provide this information to a company that sells your information. It is nobody's business how much you keep in your bank account, how you've managed your bank account, where you keep your money. Our forefathers fought hard for that Privacy Act that we all live under the benefits of that today. The IRS doesn't even know where you bank and how much you keep unless you've told them through some sort of process or they start an auditing process. But this idea that there's just this database that they can just hack into and see where, where you keep your money and all these different things is not true and is also not legal. Collection agencies do not know where you keep your money. Can you imagine this? If you're a third party collection agency that has debt owed to them and you knew where their money was and how much they and, and, and how much they had, then they would see a lot more judgments going on out there. The reason we don't see as many is because, well, Texas, for one, and a few states in the United States, is a non garnishment wage state. So all they can do is try to freeze the money in your current account. The reason they don't is because there's another process once they get a successful judgment, and that's to do a writ. Well, in order to do a writ, they need to, it needs to be worth the cost to go to the courts to get this writ okay. Well, they need to know, they need to feel confident that you have the money and where it's at in order to exercise that. Why would we want to give the information to the same bureaus that are selling your current credit information right now? It is a collection trap. If a collection agency, if anybody had their wish, man, all this information that's out there that's being sold to us, person's uh, buying habits, uh, all this information through social media, all those things. The one thing they haven't had up until this point is where do you keep your money? How do you work your finances personally? And if you're in the collection industry, that would be a huge benefit to know. Even if you're, you know, the IRS or any of that would be a huge benefit to know. So when you sign up for Experian Boost, you are opting in that information. Now, you were already born, you were already born optioned in for the credit bureaus to send, sell your information unless you option out. I have another video on that. Always a good idea to option out. I'll flash that on the screen right now. I'll also include that into the link on how you can do that. But listen, don't do the experience boost. You get nothing out of it. And when they come up with a new Ultra FICO here, it, I don't know, I, I assume it's gonna happen within the next year. Don't do that either. Hope that blesses you. I'll talk to you on the next video.